brothers and sisters, I thank God. I bless the holy name of the almighty God that has given me the opportunity to stand again today to speak to his people. Hallelujah. The reason why I'm here, I'm here to give the testimony of one of my sister, sister, Elali from Galway. And before I hand up the mic to her, I want to tell my, my brothers and sister that maybe you have not watched the first vision that the Lord showed to me. I put it on YouTube. He's talking about the dirtiness that is among the children of God. He's, he's talking how Jesus Christ was angry in that vision. Because the church of Christ is dirty. I saw how the children of God were naked. And after that, the Lord showed me again how the, the women, the sister in Christ, they dress, they dress like the world. And in and, and the dream, this second dream, the Lord asked me to go and warn the women, uh, uh, to tell them that without holiness, nobody can see God. To tell the women that God also look at their appearance, not only inside. We must be holy in everything we do. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you want to watch that video, just click on a warning from God to all women. And... I want to attach to that video the testimony of my sister Elali. She was she was a next uh, a hairdresser. Hallelujah! But she herself she will she will tell to you what make her stop hairdressing. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, man. Can you can you tell us your name? My name is Elali Joel. I'm from Ivory Coast, and I'm married to Nigeria. A base in Ireland. Hallelujah. I heard your testimony. I want you to tell my sister, all those people that are watching today, what makes you stop doing hair? Praise the Lord. And what makes me stop doing hair is that one day I was going to a church, a, a, a ministry that um, in the, is a deliverance ministry. And in the church, we don't normally wear all those kind of things, but still, I was still doing my hair. And in the church, I was not wearing all those kind of things. Wearing extension on my head and uh, wearing trouser. And one of my sisters in the church gave me a CD of one woman who spent 990 years in the kingdom of darkness. She was working with the devil for 990 years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A woman that was working with the devil for 990 years. A testimony that changed your life. That changed my life. So when I listened to that testimony, and this woman was not talking about jewelries, extension, trouser, the way the women are dressing today. Praise the Lord. So the, the testimony really touched my heart. And I'm somebody that if, if I'm doing something, and that is not glorify God. And somebody is telling me, I, I try to listen. So this testimony, I was listening to this testimony. And one night, I told my God, God, if truly it's not, it's not a, the extension I not glorify you, it's not good for a child of God to put all this extension on, on, on the head. Why not me as, as a child of God putting it for people's head? So I was just questioning myself and praying to God, that God, reveal yourself to me because I want to know the importance of all those things. Praise the Lord. So one night, the dream, I just, I just see myself. I saw a man of God in the ministry I was going. He's a man of God that everybody knows. He has branches everywhere. So I saw myself in the dream. This man of God was praying for people. And I was there in the gathering. So later on, I just went somewhere. And on my way back, I didn't see the man of God again. So I was like, well, do I just asked the people, ah, why is this man of God that was here? They said, ah, the man of God is going. So I ran after the man of God. All this in the dream. All this in the dream. When I ran after the man of God, I just called the man and said, ah, man of God, you have not prayed for me. The man was like, oh, what do you want me to pray for me, sister? What do you want me to pray for you? I said, ah, please, man of God, come and pray for me, for my husband and our business. It's not moving like before. Mm -hmm. So the man of God said, okay. And he told me, sister, stand there. And immediately the man of God wanted to pray. He said, hmm, you are making an oath. So I was wondering. And the man of God said, bring me extension. So I told, I called one sister beside me. I said, sister, please bring me extension. Uh, sorry, my sister. So you went to the man of God. You told the man of God, you want him to pray for your business, for your family. So when the man of God looked at, at her, he noticed that she, she has made a covenant with, with a 
with attachment and he asked her to bring attachment yeah. he told me to bring attachment a one the sister brought attachment she gave me extension he said extension in the dream so this woman brought it and when she brought it she gave it to me so the man of god tried to hold the extension out taking it out from my hand mm. and i was pulling it back to my side mm. he was pulling it out of my hand i was pulling it back to my side and before you know my two legs left the ground as mm. if i was flying so later on, I now fell down, and a spirit just appeared like a woman. She just appeared. So when she just appeared, I just hit the woman, and then I started running away. And the man of God was with another man of God. Were you running, running away from the woman and the man of God? Yes, I was running away from there, just going on my own. And the other man of God was shouting, that, Ah, man of God, the prayer has changed. So when he said the prayer has changed, all of them was now running after me. So the woman that I hit to run away just hit me from the back. To my waist, she just hit. She just hit me from the back, and when she hit me from there, I fell down on the ground. And the man of God just came. He held my hand and he started peeling my skin because it was like I was wearing a mask all over my body. Stop there, my sister. The man of God started peeling her skin. You know that is that means that is true. Yes. When the word of God say, "Her uh, uh, um, flesh must die." I remember one day, after the revelation the Lord showed to me that I should go and warn women about that dressing, I was praying and said, oh God, I want you to speak to me. Please, just say something. I, I saw the Lord come in the dream. He told me, he was pointing his skin. He said, tell the, the, the sisters, not the unbelievers, sister in Christ, you know, tell them that their flesh and their desire must die. So when you are telling me this, you remember me, what the Lord show to me hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord so the man of god hold my hand and he started peeling my skin from my hand to my head all over my body to my legs and he dropped them on the floor and he said go your deliverance is done hallelujah praise the lord that's praise the lord. come from the dream uh, when you wake up from the dream my sister what happened later do you just stop making hair like that no, i did not just stop making hair like that so when i wake up from the dream i told my husband since he's a man of God and uh, by the special grace of God, he has the gift of, of interpre interpretation of a uh, dream. So I told him and he started meditating on it. And later on the day, he told me to stop the hair. So, but before he told me to stop the hair, I myself, I was having the kind of conviction that, yes, this hair is not for me. Because I'm hearing message, I'm going to a church in a ministry that we don't do those things, and still I'm still doing it for people. And if I don't do it for my children, I have girls, I don't put an extension on their head, I don't put a, a, a earring on their hair, but on their ear, but still I'm doing it for people. Stop. I want to take this opportunity to speak to all those sisters in Christ. That just go, you know, you go to church, you are not wearing trousers, you are not wearing, uh, 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 you wear skirt, you don't put attachment, but outside you are putting it, you are deceiving yourself. Because it's even better you come to church with trousers. Let people know who you are. Yes. Because hypocrites, it's a, you are dub, it's double sin. Hallelujah. Amen. You are not sinning against, it's against a man. It's against God. Yes. You understand? So she was putting on, she was not putting on trousers, but her, her heart was not circumcised. Hallelujah. Amen. So from there, I just started praying to God to have mercy upon me, to give me like, to give me time because it was not easy because this is the job that I'm doing since I was a little girl. Mm. This is the job that I'm doing to, this is what I'm depend on. Mm. So that is, I was just seeing it as that's my life. There's nothing else I can do again. Yeah, to, I want to, you know, just to tell people that that's it's what she used to do. Hallelujah. We are not here to bring the anger of God against ourselves. All those things that we are saying is true. All those revelations are true. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see those are the hair that she used to do. You know, this is her job. She gave, she gave it up for Christ. Look at. See? You see? You see? <laughs> we have to deny ourselves to follow God. Look at that is her. You can see her picture. She gave up everything for God. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So from there, I just, I just prayed to God. And it was towards the end of the year. That was last year. So at the end of the year, I just decided that this 
hear that is starting from January, I will not do the hair anymore. But what happened is that I didn't totally stop. After leaving the extension, I was not like, okay, if it's wrong, bad to do the extension, let me do the wool. <laughs> so you, you drop the extension and then you say you will do the wool. And what happened, my sister? And then when I jumped to the wool, I was just doing the wool going. Everybody was asking me, ah, you're not doing extension anymore? I said, yes, I'm not doing extension anymore. Anything extension I don't want to do. But the wool, I'm doing the wool and the natural hair. So I have a sister in the same church that I was going before. So that sister called Sister Daniela. And she told me, ah, sister, this extension, that uh, this wool that you are doing is the same thing. In fact, this wool is even dada, is, they call it dada hair. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's more 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 serious than the extension mm -hmm. that you need to stop i will tell this sister, i say yes i know i will stop but it's not easy you know let me just be doing it for a while and and many sisters in class are doing it eh? yes. oh. you know they stop with the uh, the attachment now they're doing wool yes. if you are a sister you are still putting wool please listen to this testimony that is coming so many sisters were still putting the wool on their hair. Even some of my customers, they don't really like the wool, but just because they like me and they like the way I do the hair because I'm very good. That is the gift that God has given to me. So they even jumped from the extension to do the wool. So I was just doing the wool and this sister warned me. But I was not really, I was like, ah, let me just do the wool and, you know, maybe time going. I was just out little by little. I left the extension, let me just do the wool. So one day, I was just sitting there. One day I have a dream. I can't really tell you exactly what date, but I have a dream. It's this year. And I was like kind of uh, pregnant. I was, I mean, sorry, I was pregnant, but it was, the pregnancy was going towards the eight month between seven and eight months. So in that period, I have the dream. So in the dream, that same sister that was telling me, telling me in real life that I should stop the wool, that same sister was in my dream. She told me, Sister Hilary, you need to stop this wool. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. She said, you need to stop this wool because anybody, as you are doing this wool, this wool, you know, you know she even told me, you will not make heaven. Mm. So I was like, disturbed in the dream. So it's like we were going to a street that there were shops left and right. And I, in the dream, I feel that this is my business. This is my shop. So as we were going, she was behind me and warning me that I should stop. So I was like, ah, I will stop. You just wait. So I was just telling God that. I said, ah, God, please, I want to make everyone know. But I will stop the hair. Just give me the time. So my sister, in the dream, Sister Daniela was behind you. Yes. Warning you that you must stop doing the wool. Yes, she was Hallelujah. warning me. And then suddenly there is a man that just appear in my front and the man just faced me with a look of anger he was very angry he just opened your, his eyes and looked at me he said you are destroying my creation immediately what the man told me you know sometimes the way dream is immediately it's like a communication you know it's like a automatic mm -hmm. automatic mm -hmm. the, i was just feeling that this is the word the man was talking about mm -hmm. so immediately when he told me that a kind of fear just hold me and I dropped the basket I was holding and I ran back from where I was coming from. Mm. So when I ran back, I see three more people appearing in my front. Two men and one woman. That same sister Darella was on my right. One man was my, on, on the middle and the other one on my left. But what I noticed is that the man on the middle was so powerful. The power upon the man, the light. Mm. There was kind of sharp light. I couldn't even look at his face. I don't know who the man is, but there was a power that was just coming from the man. So I couldn't look at his face. I just knelt down. That is God. Praise the Lord. Jesus. When I knelt down, I was now begging. I said, sorry, God. I said, please, I will stop. I will stop. So I was kind of trying to remove the clothes I was wearing. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I was now calling the sister. I said, Sister Daniela, please come and help me. Come and help me remove it. God, please have mercy upon me. I will remove it. I will stop it. So immediately the sister wanted to help me. My husband shouted my name. And I wake up with fear from the dream. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is a wonderful testimony. Sister, can you listen to this? My sister, when after this, did you stop doing Yeah, that? after 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 then. Just, it just take me like let's say maybe a month or two to stop the wool. 
Ah, my sister, me, if it's me after having this, I will not go back to wool again. No. I will just stop it. But we thank God because it's not by power, by might. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Ah, because, you know, we are, we are, we are all to human beings and it's the spirit of God in us that is, that is making us, you know, overcoming everything. So, but, you know, the kind of fear that was in me that uh, if I stop this, say, ah, I'm not going to survive. You know, I was just asking myself so many questions because I came from a polygamy family and because of uh, 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 um, money, my parents didn't have that money like that, that much like that. So I couldn't continue studies, you understand? So I was like, ah, I'm not going to survive. Especially when I stopped the extension, I was asking myself, I said, the kind of fear that was coming to me that mm. if you stop this extension, what can you do? You didn't go to school? That's what can you do? Mm. You know, I was like, what is wrong? So I said, God, and thank God, when this, this, this kind of thought was coming in my mind, and my mind just go to the scripture in the book of Matthew 6, 33, who said that seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. So when I read that scripture, the scripture just give me strength. And I take a decision. I say, yes, I will stop because I know my God is able to meet my need at the, to meet, uh, meet me at the point of my need mm. according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Mm. So I take a decision from there to stop. And since then, you know, before when I was doing the hair, to tell you that it's, it's something that is really part of my life. Mm. If a day I didn't have any customer, I'm mm. troubled. In fact, I'll put my anger on my husband. I'll put it on my children. I was like, oh God, customer didn't come today. What is wrong? Some customers, I will even call them, this hair that you did, it's a long time, oh, you need to do another hair, you know? But since I stopped doing hair, to tell you that it's God, I have peace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give glory to God. Only him can do this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My sister, do you have to, do you want to add anything again? Yes. I want to just tell my sister in Christ, you know, God, God, God is a God, is a beginning and the end. You know, this world is the one that created the world. So you know, as a child of God, you need to, you need to behave yourself. You know, you, you need to comport yourself. Even the way you dress, the way you do things, people need to know, see Christ in you. You know, like people say that, yes, it's in your heart. It's your heart. It's not only the heart God is talking about. He's talking about the heart and the appearance. For instance, we woman be, for me to know that you are a child of God, you need to show me your appearance. I need to see it in your appearance. In your attitude, in your character, I need to see you that, yes, you are a child of God. Because it's God that sees the heart and he also sees the outside. For you to show people that, yes, you are a child of God, you need to sh- present yourself as a child of God. And some people will tell you that, yes, that uh, what about people that do all those kind of things, that don't dress, that don't wear trousers, they tie their head, but still, they are very wicked. The Bible says that, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Praise the Lord. So, if you walk out, the appearance, yes, they are trying. Yes, that is the code that God has given to us. That as a child of God, as a born again child of God, that is the way you have to dress. But still, they are still fighting. Also, it doesn't mean that it qualified them for them to go to heaven. But they are still fighting with their own salvation, with fear and trembling. You don't need to look at that to say yes. That because the way they are dressing, they are, they are more wicked. No, that, that's not your business. That one don't have anything to do with you. But this is what the Bible says women to adopt themselves, to dress. So you don't need to take, we, we are in the world, but not of the world. Amen. We are passing by, we are strangers in this world. So you need to live your life as a child of God. Whatever, where we are going is eternal life. You cannot compare it with this life that we are living here. Praise the Lord. All those things, they are vanity upon vanity. Vanity upon vanity. They are not good for us and we need to stop. Please, my brothers and sisters, child of God, when the Bible said, do not, do not, we need to obey because obedience is better than sacrifice. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my sister. If you are listening to this message, go back to God. First of all, you must be born again. You give your life to Jesus and then you ask God to transform you because when God comes in somebody's life, He transforms the whole life. You have not given only your inside, you give everything. God wants both your body, your soul, and your spirit. Hallelujah, my sister. I pray that after listening to this message, your life will never be the same. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Nothing will take my